Hi, it's Kernetex here, and in this video I'm going to be going through the setting up of the BIOS to allow the overclocking uh, function that's in the BIOS and to stabilize the throttling of the CPU when it's under heavy usage. So I've spent quite a number of hours well, basically trying to learn about the overclocking and what the new CPUs are allowed to do. It seems like the overclockability of Intel chips has been around for a few generations now. Um, as I said in one of my previous videos, that I don't update very often. And the last time I updated was uh, with the Hazel uh, architecture, which was back in the about ooh, 2013 or so, I think it was. Um, yes, there was an AI tweak on the motherboard that I had there, Asus motherboard, but I, I didn't take any notice of it because I just wanted stability. But it seems with this new motherboard and probably others that the overclocking is kind of mainstream, if you like. It's um, by default when you power on the machine for the very first time, it's in a mode where it's learning and looking to optimize the motherboard. Um, the Intel defaults, the stock uh, settings aren't the default power up. So I've, I've been looking to use it and have set it up successfully to get a small improvement. I've seen, depending on how I've optimized it, I've seen between three and a half and nearly 5% uh, improvement with the overclocking turned on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through settings, I'm going to set up the default Intel settings, show you what happens there, then I'm going to move on to the Asus tweaker and use those settings, show you what happens there, um, and then finally I'll um, tidy up by showing you how I stabilize it so that the, throttle, the CPU is not throttling itself, but still gaining some of the overclocking performance. Um, and a stable platform, which is key to me. The if if I couldn't get a, st um, a stable platform with the overclocking, then I wouldn't bother. I'd just go you know, back to the stability. But as I'll show you, even just switching back to the Intel defaults, the platform's not stable. And I believe is that that's because what I've read is that the i9 12900. Uh, when it's plugged into the Z690 chipset, it by default is allowed to take as much power as it needs, and probably because of that, that's why there's so much uh, heat generated, and why probably even the best cooling system is not adequate when when this CPU is pushed to the limit. So yes, as you've seen in my previous videos, I've got an um, all-in-one cooling so solution that's probably not the best. It's only a twin fan one when I think I really need a three fan one um, and probably the larger of the three, three fans. Um, so that's something I will be looking to replace in the future. Uh, but I'm looking to get a replacement that is specifically designed for the 1700, the LGA 1700. It seems like the current, for what I read, the current um, cooling solutions have just been adapted from existing cooling solutions and I think some new cooling solutions that have been designed specifically for the LGA 1700 socket need to be released before I think I'll upgrade um, to get the best out of it. Yes you'll see uh, loads of places with people saying oh yeah I'm getting you know 60 degrees or 80 degrees or whatever I don't believe those people are running the i9 12900 um which is basically you know just un unleashes itself uh, I'd be very surprised if anybody's getting anywhere below 90 if you are I'd be you know quite interested if you post your specs what you're running and if that is sustained with you know something like prime 95 or you know, some sort of intensive rendering um, would really be, really be interesting to know how you're doing that. Um, now, I, I'm not into tweaking or overclocking. Don't understand it. I don't really have the time to learn it. 
uh, and probably don't really have the inclination to learn it. Although I'm, I'm sure there are people who can tweak it and get good, good stability and good temperatures. Um, but what I'm going to show you is just using the basic tools that the um, Asus BIOS uh, has uh, on offer for the for the user. So what I've got here at the moment is the current settings. This is the settings I've got stable. So I'm going to go through all the whole process again. Might end up slightly worse or slightly better. It obviously depends on um, you know the ambient temperature in this room. Um, when I did this previously, these figures here. Oh, let's use this mouse. Um, the cooler. This is like a rating for the cooler. Uh, it was 150. Initially, when I set the machine up, it was 156, 157, um, and but I was getting throttling, so it wasn't ideal. It's just a rating on how the motherboard assesses your cooling system, and it reckons between 150 and 159 for an all-in-one. Uh, higher figures for a custom water cooling uh, loop, and slightly lower if it's a air cooling solution. So you can see 153; it's within range. For a cooling system, as I was getting 156 before, again it's within range, but it was probably a little too high in the range. SP is like an index for the process performance. From what I can ascertain, um, 85 is uh, a bit above average. Some people say they've had 90 plus, which is like a sort of almost like a golden sample of the CPU. And again, it's just a rating that the BIOS gives according to the quality of the CPU so as I say 85 slightly higher I'm not sure what average is whether it's 70 or 80 or what but um, I have seen uh, other people on the internet stating that this sort of figure is just slightly above average so luckily I've got one of the slightly better CPUs although obviously it would be nicer if it was a 90 plus but um, there are people who buy several CPUs keep the best and sell the others but um, I'm not prepared to do that and I'm quite happy with what I've got at the moment. So as I say what I'm going to do first of all is reset the motherboard settings so to do that I'll press F5 to load what well, it does say load optimized defaults uh, and then what I'm going to do is to change these settings back to from what I can ascertain are the um, Intel Defaults, did that change? Right, it doesn't seem to have changed the memory settings for some reason. So, what I should do is oh, I see it hasn't, it has done that, it's just not changed these figures here. Right, okay. So, what I need to do here is to change this to manual to stop that changing I need to change that to that to boost that should be okay that one uh, enforce all limits and Intel's fail safe and the performance of efficiency cause Think should be to sync all cores. So these should be pretty standard settings. So what I should do is now F10. You can see all the previous settings have been reset. So I'll reset them. And of course, what happens here because so many settings have been changed, the machine will actually switch itself off and then reboot so when that comes up I'm just going to go back into BIOS just to check those settings have indeed been changed I'm just waiting for the yep there it is okay yeah and I forgot to set the CPU fan I've actually got the cooler monitor lead fan speed lead uh, plugged into one that actually says um, all in one cooler AIO cooler so rather than the CPU fan 
Um, but it seems the CPU fan speed is the default one that it looks out for if it's not receiving a signal. So I need to go to monitor fan speed and set this to ignore so that it doesn't trouble me. And you'll see when, yeah, there it goes. There's the AIO pump speed there. So I'll save that again. And this time I'll let it boot. And what I'm going to do to start off with is to just boot into the first kernel that I built um, when I built this machine, the first Gen 2 kernel. And I'm going to use that as the baseline for all the tests that I do. And then um, probably another video I'll go through and show the different kernels and how they've affected uh, Linux. So you can see I've been trying various different kernels. As I said, the first one I'm going to be using for these tests is this one here, 5.10.76. So this is what was around prior to Alder Lake being released. Um, one thing you'll have to bear with me with is there won't be any uh, graphical environment at this point because I just use the stock uh, graphics card or graphics subsystem that's built into the chip. Uh, so there's no, I've, I've currently got, a, I think there's a GT730 in there. There's no drivers installed for the NVIDIA. So I'll just be using the terminal for the time being. So I'll log in. And what I'm going to do on this terminal is to run a command to watch the uh, a parameter that's in the uh, kernel that gets exposed. I have to use this cursor because there's no cursor here. Um, and it monitors the number of times that each core gets throttled. So basically when the core reaches 100 degrees or more, it will get throttled. It will, I, I imagine it will just put it on hold and stop it processing until the temperature reduces on that core and then it will release it and let it start executing instructions again. So every time that happens, this counter will increment by one. So you can see I've booted here and all the counters are set to zero. So each one of these zeros is one of the cores. So there should be 24 zeros there, one, one for each of the uh, threads, sorry, not cores that are available. So I'm going to switch to another terminal now. Log in again. What I shall be running here is something called Povray, which is persistence of vision. Uh, it's a ray tracing package. It's been around since the day days of DOS. It's a very old program, at least 20 years plus. Um, and it's just a program where um, script files, basically, if I edit the file that drives this, there's an example here, and it's just basically like a programming language that defines a three-dimensional scene, which is rendered using ray tracing. So it's the same kind of thing that the latest um, RTX NVIDIA graphics cards do. Um, probably AMD, I don't know because I don't follow the AMD graphics cards. Uh, but certainly the NVIDIA RTX, you can see it's just stuff that describes a scene there. And I'll be running the command which will render that scene. Now because we're in a terminal, it obviously won't display anything. But I've taken these parameters from the benchmark uh, readme at the top in the comments. The only thing I've changed is I've changed the dimensions of the picture. So the default is 512 by 512, which, you know, years ago when, you know, this was a benchmark that was first designed for this program, it would have been a scene that would have taken several minutes to render. Um, obviously, it's a bit too quick with modern processors, so I've just upped it to the height of a HD screen so it is a it is supposed to be rendered as a square image which is why I've done the width as, at 1080 as well um, I could render it at full HD or indeed any other resolution but the image gets cropped and so on so I thought I'd keep it as um, a square image 
I can't remember what these other parameters are. Like I said, I've just lifted them out of the example. I think I've tweaked one or two of them. I think this is something to do with that NTA aliasing this one. One thing I've added is this parameter here to specify I want all threads used that I've got available, which is 24. I don't believe it will try and use any more threads that in, uh, are available to it in the CPU. So if I made that 32, for example, um, yeah, I'm not sure now. It, maybe if I did 32, it will try and render 32 threads, but obviously it's gonna, not going to run any quicker because it can't. Um, so I've just set that to the number of threads so that I use everything that's available to me. So what I'll do is I'll run this and show you uh, it rendering and at the end, of, as you might have noticed, I did a time command so I'll get a final time of how long it took. I believe also when the rendering's finished it outputs the number of seconds that it took to render anyway. So when that's finished, and if I can find my pen, I'll make a note of the time it took. To render, it's normally about a minute and a half, I think. And just about now, the fans are starting to come on, so the processor is warming up. In fact, while that's happening, if I switch to the other terminal, you can see that the cores are throttling. You can see these counters going up. And I guess because some of these numbers are replicated, these will be the performance cores. So this will be one core, but obviously both threads are being throttled on that core. So it looks like there's five cores in total, which are being, or six now, which are being affected by the heat. So it's nearly finished. So yeah, so that one's taken 1 minute 20.4, so I'll make a note of that. Um, and if I reran it, it would vary. Um, for example, when I ran this previously, one reading I got was 1 minute 20.7, so slight differences, but roughly it's 1, one minute 20. If I was to do this a bit more scientifically, then yeah, I'd probably take a minimum of 3 readings and take an average. But yeah, as you can see, that that is throttled, and that's at Intel, or as far as I can tell, at Intel stock settings with no overclocking. Um, so what I'm going to do now is to reboot and um, start the overclocking function. So I'll come out of this and shut that down and reboot and go into the BIOS again. Okay, so we're back into the BIOS. So what I'm going to do now is to reset or load the defaults again. So this puts it back to the default state. I'm also going, I'm not sure if I need to do this, but there's an option here. Because what happens now is that the AI, AI tweaker starts collecting data and starts profiling the, the CPU based on how the cooler is performing and makes adjustments to overclock but try and stay within certain constraints such as temperature and so on. And there's a function here to enable us to reset, yeah, recalibrate the cooler. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to recalibrate it and it says it will retrain the cooler and lose your previous results which is what I want because I'm doing fresh training. So I'll reset that. I'll also 
set this back to ignore because I've loaded the defaults. And I'll save those settings so you can see that the overclocking tuner has gone from, from manual to auto. Um, the BIOS optimization feature has been set. This SVID behavior has been set to auto. And the two different types of cores have been set to auto as well for the how they adjust their speed. So I'll accept that. So the system's powered itself off. And on again, I'll just wait for it to settle down and come back up again. Okay, so here it comes. So once again, I'll go down to the original kernel. And as I say, now the BIOS is monitoring the system, how it's performing. Um, and it'll probably start taking notes when we start pushing the system because that's what's what it's interested in. So again, I'm going to watch the cores, see how and when they throttle. And once again, I'm going to run this benchmark and see what times we have here. Now in theory it shouldn't get too much uh, of a difference compared to last time. It might get a little bit because we haven't restrained the CPU or the motherboard to the Intel defaults. Um, the defaults that the Asus motherboard sets up may be a little bit optimized straight out of the box so there may be some slight improvement. So I'll just switch over to the cores, see if they're throttling. They're not throttling yet, so that's a good sign. Shows that things have improved already. The fans have started to wind up a little bit later this time, so it shows maybe the default um, ASUS settings in the BIOS are probably better than just switching things to the stock Intel settings. And yeah, we've got some throttling happening now, but it's minimal. It's a lot better than it was. And we've got a better time now of 117, basically 116.9. So that's quite an improvement already. It's three seconds, which is, what was it? Three seconds, 17. Yeah, about two and a half seconds. Yeah, about two and a half seconds improvement, which if we work out uh, two and a half seconds over about 80 seconds, that's a 3% improvement already just by using the stock defaults. And it's been learning about how we, how the, you know, the machine is being used. Now, normally by training or while training, I'd, I'd let it do that um, high performance stuff for a lot longer. You know, whether it's running this POV rail, you know, doing a bigger scene, high resolution, or you know, if you're um, running Windows, maybe you want to do Prime 95 or something else. Cinebench, I've seen, is another one to use. Or for me, GCC is another one I'd run because that is really intensive as well on the processor. But for this demonstration, I'll just stick with this quick run that I've just done. So once again, I need to come out of this and go back into the BIOS to actually activate the settings that have been learned. So I'll come out of there, go back to this terminal, quit that, come out and reboot.
and now to fix these changes I need to change this to manual and I need to set the performance core ratio to AI optimized and that normally changes yeah, the efficiency core ratios to AI optimized as well. So if I now save that, reboot again and run the test I should see roughly the same timings again but I'll also get on the splash screen uh, an estimate of the overclocking capabilities here so says 71 percent there and that's just a a guide as to how well it's been overclocked and it says your cooler has been somewhat characterized press f1 to enter bias to confirm so i need to go back into the bias again to confirm that i'm happy with that yes to stop updating its score press no to continue doing so and that's it if i press f10 it says it's not made any changes to the bios settings now i was under the impression it did keep on updating it because there are some settings which i'll show you in a short while where it keeps monitoring the system keeps adjusting itself but we'll assume it's taken those figures and it's not going to adjust it you can see it still says 71 percent that doesn't mean the process is running 71 percent faster or anything it's just a, another index if you like so i'll go back into the old kernel and now I'm going to do the same again. Set the watch up for the throttling. And rerun the benchmark. Now when I originally did this, it used to come up with 68% as the overclocking index and it was fine and then a couple of boots later it would change to 71% and then I'd get throttling. Um, so it did seem like it was still trying to push, uh, trying to optimise as best as possible the system but not quite getting it right. But it seems, I've had a few BIOS, I think I've done about four or five BIOS updates in the last what about three months or so two or three months so it's so obviously the BIOS is being improved and it's behaving a bit better now it's being being a bit more accurate but as you can see it's still throttling the CPU just um, it's even throttling it more than um, when we were training the system so it does seem this the estimate of 71 percent is a little bit too uh, optimistic and it probably does need to be throttled back a little bit more to prevent the CPUs throttling although it does seem they're fixed now they're not updating anymore so again it could be that it's training itself still further um, and getting a more accurate figure so again it's 116.89 so it's about a tenth of a second faster than last time but it's probably not a lot in it um, as you would expect, we've we've done the training, we've told it to use those settings, so you wouldn't really expect it to change that much anyway. Um, but as you can see, I'm still getting quite a lot of throttling, which is not what I want. Uh, there's also a little red light on the motherboard, which comes on indicating that the CPU is overheating as well, um, and that it's, it's having to throttle back. So what I'm going to do next is to reboot again and do the same sort of thing but this time incorporating the memory XMP profile um, because that's something else that I want to incorporate into getting the system working is to make use of the fact that I haven't got bog standard memory it's memory that's apparently capable of doing 4400 cycles per second so I want to incorporate that now and see what difference that makes to the scores that I've been getting
So once again, I'll do F5 to reset everything. I'm going to come down to, so we go to AI Tweaker. I'm going to go into AI Features and tell it to recalibrate the cooler. And you'll notice the cooler has been rated at 154 now, so it is rating a little bit higher. Recalibrating it, it's set it right down to 125. It's just changed as I've been speaking. So that's obviously where it starts. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is to set the profile to XMP2. So this reads the uh, memory profile off of the RAM. You can see the some of the settings it's got there. And finally, I've got to change the fan speed again. To otherwise, it won't let me boot the system. It will just keep telling me to go into the BIOS. So I have to remember to change it. So I'll save this, and you can see there's all the memory settings that it's changed there. So what I've got to do now is retrain the system again, but this time, as I say, it's with the memory profile loaded. So it's just powered down and it's uh, bringing itself up again. Now I'm interested in this to see if the memory makes any difference. It could be that the be uh, benchmarking I'm running, the uh, Povray, doesn't make much use of memory, so maybe a bit of a pointless thing but it'll be interesting to see if it has does have any effect on the system that, that maybe that I need to run a more specific test to test the memory to identify if uh, I'm getting any advantage out of the system uh, using the XMP profile so once again same process watch the throttles just get an idea of the impact of what we're doing on the system and uh, run the benchmark again and wait for that to complete so I'll just switch over here I'm going to watch this to see if and when the core starts throttling, it's probably going to start about halfway through the rendering. The image, you'll see it when I come to do the later kernels, it's um, less intensive on the processor initially. The latter half of the image is more complex, so that's why it tends to need to get quite a way in before it starts throttling. So it should be some time now. Would it? Yeah, there's some figures there starting to update. So it's just hitting that point. The little red light on the motherboard has come on as well, indicating that there's overheating. So, yeah, it's going wild again. Okay, so that's done. So it's slightly slower than before, on 17.2, but we're still faster than the um, original uh, time we took with the stock, or as close as I understand I can get to the stock Intel settings. Uh, still about roughly three seconds, is it? Yeah, just over three seconds faster, so that's still quite good. So what I'm going to do again now is to go back to the BIOS and tell it to use those settings. Now that it's been trained again. And 
and I need to go into Tweaker. I'll leave this tuner as it is. Uh, yeah, the AI tuner. And I'll come down here to set the performance core ratio to AI optimized. And the efficiency core automatically follows what the performance core ratio is set to. So I'll save that. And again, we should see the overclocking, I assume it will be at 71% when it, when it boots. Yep, still the same. It's telling me it's been characterized, so I'll press F1 to go back into BIOS to confirm it. Yes, and just save the settings again, but it says there's nothing to save, so it just reboots. Okay, so again, load up the original kernel. Once again, do the same as I've done before. And see what we get for this one. So already we've got throttling um, and the rendering has only just begun, which is not what I would expect. And it could be that the AI has optimized a little bit more than before because the memory has been tuned up due to the XMP2 profile. Well, that ha does seem to have settled down. It's just an initial burst. Let's see if it does any more when it gets towards the end. When, as I say, it does do more intensive calculations. It seems to be quite settled. Okay, so this time we've got 1 minute 19, so it's actually slower, which is interesting. So it seems that to tune it, it's probably best to leave the first tuning setting, which is the AI, and the AI features, I think it was the AI tweaker and leave that to auto and maybe set the XMP2 afterwards. Um, that would probably give the best performance. Although, as I say, the memory, I imagine, has probably not got a lot, great deal of impact on this type of benchmark. Um, it's just doing lots of tight loops. It, I wouldn't have thought it's using much memory at all. Uh, if I start it up again. So I can view it here to see what it's using. 0.1% memory. So that doesn't sound like a lot at all. Yeah, it's only 64 megabytes, so it's, it's nothing at all. I imagine it, most of it's just a buffer for the image that's being rendered. So I'll stop that. I'll stop that as well and I'll reboot and what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to reset everything but make some additional settings adjustments to prevent the CPU from throttling 
I have to stop it getting that hot that it needs to throttle. So once again, F5 to load the defaults. I'll set the fan first because I tend to forget that. Go back to the tweaker. I'm going to leave this as auto this time and what I'll do is I'll set that after I've done the tuning. I'll reset the algorithm next. So re, so re, retrain it to lose the results. Yes, yes, I want to do that. Yep. And then what I need to do here is to change some of these settings. Um, what I do here is set the. Cooler reevaluation algorithm, as in to least inclined to update. Uh, sorry, not this one. I need to change this one optimization scale to 95. I think it's just an index. Um, as it says 100 is the default, but it says the higher, the more optimistic predictions, and lower, the less optimistic. So I thought if I set it to 95. It will be less optimistic. It will try and push the system uh, a lot less. Um, so basically that's the only thing I've changed is that I'm telling it when it's trying to optimize it, don't be as aggressive. Uh, just stand back a little bit. So I'll save these changes. And what I need to do now is to retrain it and then I'm going to change the set it with setting which will tell it to be um, less inclined to make any updates. Okay, back to the original kernel. So, once again, load up the throttle count. Because we're training, we're going to see the throttle count go up. Oops. Let's run this. So it's not throttling just yet. That's still okay. So we should be, or I expect to see something soon on the throttling. Okay, it could be that already it knows that we've told it not to be so aggressive that it's not going to throttle. Um, although I have seen it throttle at this time previously. Yeah, there's a couple, yeah, there's a lot less. You can see there's a couple come in there on one core. Uh, gone to seven, a count of seven. And it's finished as well, so... That shows that setting has made a difference. So we've got 119.6 there. So again, it's not the best, but we're still faster than the original baseline settings for the Intel um, options. 
So I'm going to come out of this now. And reboot to fix those at that training. You see the cooler has actually got 155 is a little bit higher than what I've expected. Uh, as you saw when I started it was 153 so I'm surprised that's that high but that's a good thing I can achieve that and still keep everything under control. So I'm going to change this to manual initially and then I need to change not that one, not that one. Uh, performance core to AI optimized so, and efficiency core AI optimized so I'll save that oh and I'm also going to as I go down here to AI features and there's an option here to set this algorithm least like least inclined to update so even though I've turned it off, in case it is still monitoring in the background. Oh yeah, I'm also going to tell it to stop training here as well. So because these settings look good, this should tell it to not try and optimize it anymore. So I'll save those settings. Wait for it to reboot. Okay, so now you can see the overclocking 65%, so it's um, even less than the auto 68% I was originally getting that then went on to 71% magically in the background. So it did seem like even the 68% was too uh, aggressive. So again, we've got this message. I think this message is something new that's been changed in the BIOS as well because it didn't used to come up. But it's good that it's actually sort of saying to you that, uh, you know, you sure you want to stop training it? So I said yes to that, let it reboot, run another benchmark and see what's happened. And then the final thing I'm going to do is to turn back the XMP profile um, and see what effect that has. So again, there's a 65%. I might just try and tweak that setting that I set to 95 and see if I can you know, get it a little bit higher just to eke out last little bit but it's not going to be a lot in it at all it's it probably wouldn't even be worth the effort doing but i might do it just for the sake of doing it okay so start the watch up on the cores oops wrong last time and rerun this now i I'm not expecting because this is the final tune that I've done and I've told it not to be so aggressive. I'm not expecting to see any um, any faults appear in the core throttle monitor here. So at the end of the rendering I expect that to be zero still on, on all threads. So I'll just keep switching back every now and then, just keep an eye on it. Yeah, the fans have just come on. I can just start hear them through the headphones. So it does seem that they've started a little bit later, which is a good thing. Not getting any red light coming on the motherboard. They're still zero. And we've got one minute 19. So 
again, we're not getting the absolute best that we had, but we were getting throttling, but we're still getting timings which are just under a second better, which as I say is about 1 or 2%, which is not too bad given that the cooler I've got is not probably the best for the system, um, but we're still getting a slight improvement. Um, and again, if I go back here, you can see that I've now got a system that's completely stable. It's not throttling due to temperature changes. Um, in fact, if I rerun this, um, just to prove that it's not going to go over as well. Run it again. So when it gets about halfway, three quarters of the way, that's when it really does start hammering the CPU and the fan. Again, I can hear them now, so they've, they've actually started up a bit sooner, probably because I hadn't let it cool down from the previous run. But this is good. This is what we want. It's a good intensive test. As I say, normally I'd be running this for a lot longer, maybe you know, 20 minutes, half an hour or so. Um, the GCC compiler in here takes about 30, 35 minutes. Um, I'd also be running that as well and ensuring that didn't cause any problems. So as you can see, we're 95% of the way and there's still no faults. So it's looking completely stable now. And we're still getting... You know, slight improvement in the stock settings. So the final thing I'm going to do in this part is to just set the XMP profile back. As I don't think it's going to make a great deal of difference, and that's just probably down to the benchmark that I'm using, which isn't really uh, memory uh, intensive. So I'll just select this and save it. For some reason, whenever I change that setting, it seems to switch the PC off twice. It sort of switches off, turns on, switches off, turns on again. So I don't know what it's doing, whether it's sampling something or testing something. And assuming this benchmark runs, the final thing that I would do, the BIOS has got built in mem test. I would run the that mem test and let it run through to ensure that the XMP profile is working correctly. But let's now for now just see if that has made any difference to our benchmark. So once again, during this or in the end, I wouldn't expect to see any faults on the throttle count. Quick look, yeah, there's nothing there. Well, 
Well, there's quite a big pause at the end of that. I'm not sure why that was. Um, it's made the figures look worse. So I'm going to run that again. That's probably a exception rather than the rule. Again, there's no faults on the throttle count, so that's good. Let's wait for the remainder of this to finish. And bearing in mind, this is another run straight after the previous one, so it hasn't had a chance to cool down completely. It'll be more a chance for the throttling to come in due to overheating and it's clearly not happening so it shows that the setting change to tell the optimizer to not to be so aggressive or optimistic is working well it seems like setting the XMP profile is uh, not as efficient as the ASUS uh, settings so it could be that I need to profile the machine with those settings on for the best possible performance rather than setting them afterwards. But in any case, you can see that the throttle still hasn't occurred. Um, apart from the fact that I've set the XMP2 on, um, without that, the settings mean that I've actually got a slight improvement. Even, even now, even looking at these readings, there's a slight improvement of about half a second. So there's still better than we had originally where it was slower and we're getting faults um, got a slight improvement in speed and no faults so that means that this machine as far as I'm concerned is set up well almost set up like I say what I would do is run the mem test with the XMP2 profile once I've set that up correctly so I think I should profile this with the XMP2 in fact I'll do that now while I'm here uh, look out reboot do all these settings again one final time Okay, so F5 to load defaults. Ignore the CPU fan. And I'll set this to XMP2. And uh, where is it? Reset. Recalibrate the cooler. Oh, I forgot to set the optimism optimism scale. Optimism scale set back to 95, and now I can boot into the kernel, recalibrate, and get some timings from that. Then OK, 
Okay, we're in again. Run the watch. Rerun the renderer, the benchmark. So again, because we're training the system here, we'll expect to see some faults appear eventually. Uh, oh yeah, but we might not do because I've told it to be less optimistic in its assessment of the system. So if you remember before, we did get a, a few, but not, not many. So may see that again, possibly. So it's eight. Yeah, I've got a few more here, actually. Okay, so we're back to the good times here. We've got 117.3. Let's see what happens. 117.3, just making notes of these. Okay, so I'll come out of that. Come out of that, reboot. And this is probably why I should have configured this originally, is to train it with the XMP2 on rather than set it after. Let me start again. After I've done the training, so that I'm training it with the unit as a whole rather than just a particular aspect of it. Okay, so I'll leave that as it is and I change that to AI optimized. That should have changed as well. And then I want to change this to the least likely and tell this to stop training. And you can see the cooler rating is slightly less this time. It's 154. That could be the because the memory is more capable that it was it was able to push the system faster, but then it had to peg it back a bit because um, of the fact that it was moving faster. So it could be why the rating's a little bit less. I'll save this. So again, we've got the 65%. Confirm this. And save and exit. So once again, back into the original kernel, log in. And monitor the throttling. And now rerun the benchmark and see what results we get. So 
So again, I don't expect to see any faults here at all. This should be the system, how I'd want to use it day to day. See, I can hear the fans coming on again. They've come on later. They've kind of come on about 75% rather than initially it was earlier at about 50-60%. Yeah, and you can see there I've got a good time uh, straight away so that is obviously the best I'm going to get with given the um, parameters I've set and the cooling I've got uh, but I haven't got any faults but I've got a good time which is if I look back at my original time which was 120.7 I've now got 117.4 which is 2.3 sorry 3 point 3.3 seconds faster so if I work that out 3.3 over approximately 80 seconds that's a 4% improvement in throughput I've got and I've got no faults occurring so it's a successful configuration of the overclocking system on the motherboard and these are the settings I'll now be using for my next video which will be showing the differences in the kernels as they've uh, been making changes to them finally get to what purposes of these videos to identify uh, the changes to the kernel and what impact they're having on programs. So thank you very much for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you found it useful and subscribe to my channel if you want to hear about more of my videos. Goodbye.